Hey guys, it's Stephen here from Game Not Loaded. And yes, this is it, the official first podcast. Yay! A little applaud. So, um, yeah, and this is the first podcast. Um, it's not going to just be me. As mentioned before, that there hopefully will be other guests here. Um, I do know a few other people that uh, hopefully will be coming onto the show. And I want it to be a couple more people as well. I just don't think um, I could hold a show by myself uh, every time I do this now. Um, this time, no, it's just going to be me. It's usually going to be a short one just to see how this all works out. Uh, how I'm going to do it is I'm going to record it on this. I'm going to just put up on YouTube at the moment uh, just for all my subscribers to see um, and listen to it and see what they think of it. If they're happy with everything or there's any improvements I can do first, then I will hopefully upload it somehow. Uh, I'm going to look into it and obviously get it down to the means so you can download it and so on and so on and so on. Now, uh, there's going to be a few things that we're going to talk about today. Now, I'm hopefully going to be adding things in here and there and all that kind of stuff, so it's not going to be me talking. Hopefully, there's going to be sound effects in that. When I talk about a game, I might put a bit of uh, spiel in from the game I've talked about and so on. So I've got a few things I've written down here that I really want to kind of really discuss. But yeah, as I said before, if you're here, uh, if you know of any improvements I can do to this, then let me know um, if the quality's not the best, because I'm recording it uh, on a device and then going to upload it. And so uh, I don't know how it's going to work. But yes, um, let's just crack on and get this podcast out of the way. Um, so first of all, as mentioned in my point five, uh, 0.5 podcast, I talked about a game that I recently played, which was Batman Arkham Origins. Now, did you find a body? No. And next time, keep your other assassins out of my way. You had your shot, Deathstroke. But you're not the only assassin in town. And the night is young. Batman Arkham Origins for me um, just didn't feel like it was, was meant to be there. It felt more like a filler kind of game. Um, and I really wasn't too sure about it, even though it played exactly the same as the other games. Um, and unfortunately, it was made by, I think it was made by a different developer uh, than the first two. It just felt like they just took Arkham City, put a bit of snow on it, and he went, here you go, here's another game that's put some bad guys in here now. Um, a lot of the, the fights themselves and the bad guys you come across are just, just don't feel like they should be there. Um, the fighting, as I said before, the fighting is exactly the same. The AI is exactly the same. The the kind of everything, the weapons that you use, everything is the same, but it just didn't feel the same, if that makes sense. I just don't, I can't really explain it too well um, for me personally. I know a lot of people still like the game. Oh, pardon me, I do apologize. I think I burped there. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just, uh, I can't really explain it too well and how it, it played for me um, compared to the other two, but the, it, yeah, it just like it felt like. How can I explain it? It felt like um, the first Lord of the Ring, the first Lord of the Rings film. It felt like it was there for a build up. It was it was put there so everyone knew what was happening, and then built up for the next one, uh, which was is probably one of the better two. Um, and it just basically gives you the whole backstory to Batman, um, and this time it's uh, Black Mask. He's the the main kind of bad bad guy in it. If you've played the game, then you're going to know what happens at the end. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who's not played it and is looking forward to play it. But yes, it's a it's a good story, I would say. The story makes the game uh, for me and doesn't make it a disappointment because I enjoyed uh, watching the story and find out the, how Batman came about and, and all that kind of stuff. So yes, uh, I, I was quite happy with that side. But yeah, just for me, just everything else just felt like it was just Arkham City with a bit of snow and... Um, just uh, some different bad guys, but even when you fight the boss, I think there's a guy in it called uh, what was his name? Electrocutioner. Electrocutioner. And um, the first time you meet him, uh, this one obviously won't spoil any of the game for you. But the first time you do meet him, uh, you meet him like a what was it? I can't say like a building somewhere, and he, he jumps down and you get into a fight with him. He just literally walks up to you, and you walk up, hit the attack button, you knock him out one punch. That is that happens a few times in the game where where basically it just makes no sense uh, for that. You do obviously go back later on, but they just didn't make any sense why that was part of the game. Even the boss battles himself just felt kind of really easy. Uh, I didn't struggle at all with many of the boss battles. What I did struggle with though was um, the gang, like the gang battles. When you come across like a gang of like five or six or seven people, for some reason that just the response and 
the responsiveness of the the kind of button control and that as well. It just didn't work for me. It just that's what I'm saying. It just didn't feel right. It didn't feel like it was it was well made. It just felt like a really bad port um, of the game. And when I was trying to do counter attacks and that, it just they just wouldn't counter unless I'm really bad at this game and I'm just trying to make it sound worse than it is. But I just had a lot of problems with it and just didn't feel that it was it was it was made that well. Um, but yeah. I'm not going to go too much into this, as I already covered some of it in my last, uh, well, my test podcast uh, for it, but I just want to let you know I have finished the game now. Um, overall, uh, as I say, it was an okay game. I feel it's just a filler game uh, for the next one, which is obviously Arkham Knight, which it looks really good. I'm looking forward to that. Um, it's done by the same guys that do Origins, so I'm not too sure if they're going to do anything different to it, but um, I believe they're making some of the streets wider and that so they can fit the vehicles in it, because obviously you can now drive the Batmobile and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I look forward to that. Arkham Knight is looking like it could be one of the best games there. Um, but for me, still, Arkham City is still the best one. You cannot beat Arkham City at all. Um, so yeah, so let's just kind of bypass Batman here. Now, a few other things I really want to talk about, just more uh, things I've done uh, and want to get kind of ask you guys some questions. Now, um, what have I been playing since... Um, Batman really um, and what I've been playing just in general I've been playing a few different games I recently just started The Last of Us now The Last of Us oh my god that was the most tear jerking 20 minutes of my life that beginning of that game it was horrible to watch um, so far I've played about maybe 2-3 to three hours of it it's been a really good game um, obviously Naughty Dog um, who would have thought Naughty Dog being the, the, the makers of Crash Bandicoot making such games as Uncharted and The Last of Us and all that kind of stuff um, it's pretty crazy to think that back in the day on PS1 they were making uh, Crash Bandicoot and now look what they're making on, on things like the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 and all that kind of games, uh, all that kind of stuff, sorry. Uh, so I've been playing that and really looking uh, forward to, to finishing that. Um, it's good, um, it, it's really well done. It kind of reminds me like, um, I think, um, is it Day, Days or Day Z on the, on the, the Steam um, as a Steam, yeah, um, the Kami's Matt is the whole kind of collecting things and surviving it and all that kind of stuff. It's not maybe as detailed as as uh, Days or Daisy um, itself, but it's kind of got that feel to it where things abandoned and you can make things out to survive and all that kind of stuff. And um, looking forward to that. But yeah, if you have played it, let me know what you thought that first twenty minutes because it was pretty, it was it was pretty emotional. Got me going a little bit. Um, I spoke to my brother. He's played the game and completed. He's the one that lent it to me. And he said to me that there's another part in it later on that will just basically that will get you going um, for that. So yeah, I've been playing that. I've also been playing um, Metroid Upper M. Now, if you ever follow me on YouTube, then you know I do something called the Five Pound Game Review, which I'm starting to do. I've got a few games here that I bought for five pound that you can buy anywhere. Um, I only buy games which I know other people can get for that same price. I've picked this up. And I'm playing that, and I'm really not a fan of it. Um, I'm not a big fan of Metroid anyway, but I thought, why not? Five pound, I'll give it. A, I'll give it a go. Um, I think I've got Metroid on the GameCube, uh, which is okay. I, I, I quite like it. But I thought I'll give it a go. It looks a bit more like the old Metroids, where you go down to like the whole kind of platform and view and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just not enjoying it. Really not enjoying it at all. Uh, it started off okay, and. I was enjoying it and I've got to the first boss and I just have no idea what to do. I know I've got to point the controller because you can go when you hold the controller um, to that view and then when you point the Wii controller at the TV it goes into like a in kind of in helmet kind of view where you're kind of pointing that like bit like a Metroid Prime on the GameCube and I just when you're in that mode you can't move about you can't do anything when you're in that mode so I just uh, I'm just stuck uh, I'm basically stuck in the game and I've no idea what I'm going to do but I'm going to figure it out and hopefully get a bit further so yeah, Metroid Other M on the Wii. I've been playing that. Um, um, I'm going to finish it. As I say, it's part of my £5 game review. There's no point in me getting a game if I can't play it. Uh, I can't review it. I've been playing that. I'm trying to think of what else I've been playing, actually. Um, I've got a few games. Super Mario Galaxy. I've never actually played Super Mario Galaxy. And, oh, pardon me. Sorry. I keep burping. It's not very professional of me. I do apologise. Uh, yeah, Super Mario Galaxy on the Wii as well. I've been playing that recently. Now, I'm actually really enjoying that. I didn't think I would enjoy it because... I just don't really give my Wii enough love, um, but I'm trying to give it a bit more. I've been picking up some new games for it, uh, so I've been playing that. I've been enjoying it. I didn't think I would. I've, I've been. I've only got maybe about ten stars in it, so it's not really far in tip. I'm really enjoying it so far uh, for that. Oh, there's this kind of weird, one really creepy moment in it where I have to 
uh, go to the first planet and I've got to, it's the bumblebee one when you first turn into a bumblebee and you've got to go to the first star and you've got to go to the queen and she's like, oh, I've got a bit of an itch. And you can't claim all over her body and it seems a bit weird and you get one from her side, one from her back and then as she's kind of floating there, right, she has her legs sticking up and there's one right basically where her private parts would be and you have to collect it and she says weird things like, oh, that's tickling me and all that kind of stuff. Stop that. So I'm kind of like, mm, I'm not really too sure about that. That's meant to be like that at all. But um, yeah, it's a bit, of, a bit of a weird one, that uh, especially that part in it. Uh, because there's just a little star piece right where her her business is, if you want to call it that. Um, but yeah, I've been playing that. Uh, it's been quite good. And I think that's pretty much it, really. Um, I'm not playing anything else on any other consoles because I've got my PlayStation and Xbox 360 downstairs and then all my older consoles are upstairs in my game room. Uh, so yes, I've been playing that and uh, been enjoying it. So, um, But let me know what you've been playing. Um, leave me a, a comment or contact me and let me know. I'll give you a shout out here on the podcast. Uh, but let me know what games you've been enjoying at the moment, wherever it be retro or wherever it be um, something kind of new. If you have a PS4, I actually don't have a PS4 yet. I look forward to getting one soon though. Uh, let me know what you've been playing. Now, the other thing I really want to kind of pick up on is that um, I'm not really a big kind of PC gamer. Now, I do absolutely love Final Fantasy. I'm a big, big Final Fantasy fan. And I know they've got Final Fantasy XIV out on the PS3 now to, to play. But I just don't know. I just don't know if I can really play kind of online multiplayer games. Um, I just didn't. I don't play Warcraft. I don't play anything like that. Um, I play online games on my PlayStation, and like when you when you do like death matches or something like that, or you do racing games online, something like that, um, or I play co-op with my brother, that kind of thing. But I've never actually really played a full MMO. So I'm just moving something so I can sh- stretch my leg a little bit. Um, I've never actually played a full MMO online, so I'm just kind of really curious to, to see what you guys and that think about MMOs. Um, because I really want Final Fantasy fourteen. Now it is currently sitting at ten pound in ASDA, uh, so if you are into those things, then definitely pick up. But I just don't know if I want to pay a monthly subscription for a game, which I'm not too sure I'm going to play that much of. Uh, but I really want it, so let me know if you guys think it's worth playing, and let me know if you know anything about it. So if any of you have actually played it, let me know. I don't know the cost of it to play monthly. I just know ten pound to get the game, and then you get a thirty day free trial. So is it worth just paying that to get the thirty day free trial and see if I will play it afterwards? Um, or not, but let me know, um, I really want to play it, um, but I just don't know if I will, uh, because of that, I apologise if I say eh, eh, quite a lot, I've just noticed I've been doing that quite a bit for the whole Final Fantasy bit there, now, um, the other thing I kind of really want to kind of discuss as well, is recently I seen a trailer for a, a sort of remake reboot, and it was, I've mentioned it before in the, the, the Point .5 uh, podcast, which was Shaq Fu, they call me Superman. I don't wear tights or a cape, but I leap, dodge, and I sure as hell fly. I'm the big daddy, the big Aristotle, and I'm big time. Some ancient freaks got delusions of grandeur. Looks like Shaq Daddy's gonna have to whoop some ass. Now, Shaq Fu is probably one of the worst games I've played. Not the worst game, but it's a pretty bad game. Now, I'm just wanting to know, is there any games that you wish to see being remade um, or rebooted or anything like that? Now, I know, obviously, they've done a reboot of Strider, which has actually turned out really well. But Shaq Fu? Shaq Fu, really? And I think it's uh, done through like a Kickstarter program. Um, I think so. No, I don't, to be honest, I, I like Kickstarter. Kickstarter's all right, and it's, it's brought some good stuff out. But are they just starting to use this to... Are they using Kickstarter too much just to make things that no one wants? Because does anyone want a Shaq Fu remake? I don't know. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they if they learned anything from last time or they'll make it any better or not. But from the trailer, it just looks like a, another kind of cheesy game uh, which they're trying to make a bit of money off. So, um, and I think Shaquille O'Neal's got something to do with it as well, which is kind of a bit, uh, a bit much. Because, um, yeah, just, oh, I just didn't. I've got the game too much. I've got the game on the Mega Drive anyway. Um, I just really don't enjoy it. I never play it, but it's there to say I've got Shaq Fu. Um, so let me know if there's any kind of remakes that you guys are really looking forward to. Obviously, for me personally, I would love a Final Fantasy VII remake. A remake. It'll probably never happen, but um, yeah, I do look forward to the day. Uh, a game that I would probably really love to see is um, 
maybe something like um, it's not really an old game, but like Shadow of the Colossus or Ico. I know they've done like a HD re-release of it, but I would love to see that in like maybe PlayStation Four graphics or or something like that. I'd love to see a game like that in in really good quality, or even um, well, what 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 can ever be another really good game? Um, I'm trying to think of games I used to really love back in the day, and um, for that, um. Obviously, for me, um, they're doing that. I actually used to play Carmageddon quite a lot back in the day on the PC. I know they're they're doing a new version of that uh, for the PC, which is hopefully going to come out at some point. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's any lot of games out there that you'd love to see. I don't really know. Um, but yeah, let me know actually if you have any games that remakes you want to make. If you want to see, um, I would actually mind seeing a new Double Dragon actually, um, or even a new. Streets of Rage, something like that. They would be really fun games to play. It doesn't have to be like in, in 3D or anything like that. It could just be a good uh, classic 2D kind of remake. Uh, maybe downloadable, something like that, which is, is quite good. Like uh, I think they've done one of, is it one of the Turtle games maybe they've just done recently or it was like that. Uh, they kind of done a, like a sort of kind of new game in that style and they download only. But yeah, definitely. Maybe something like that. Double Dragon, a nice little fighting player, fighting player game. That makes no sense. Uh, a nice uh, fighting game. I'd love to see something like that. But let me know if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see remade. Um, it'd be good to kind of hear them as well. Now, there's a couple of, there's just kind of two more things I think I really want to cover in this podcast. It's just going to be a short one just to see how this all goes. Uh, the other two things are, um, I wrote something, if you ever went to my, if you've ever been to my website, um, it's just gamenotloaded.com, but it's, it's just a free site, so it's really not too good at the moment. Uh, but I will hopefully be getting it better and um, making it look a lot better soon. Now, one of the things I posted up there, and it was also posted on my Facebook page, um, was the, it was car- titled, Does Nintendo Need to Make a SNES 2? Now, what I mean by that is, that has Nintendo lost a lot uh, by making these gimmicky consoles? Obviously, the Wii was a massive, massive, massive success. But was it really any good? And uh, the Wii has obviously got some really good games on it, but that may be just because those games were released for that console. If that game was released on every console, then would it still be a really good game? Uh, there's a few games I think I know that have come out on the Wii that are just really good, and um, but weren't released on every console. Like I know, like Xenoblade Chronicles, that was released Wii only. Uh, is it Pandora's Tower Wii only? No, did they take full effect of the Wii um, controls? I'm not 100 percent sure because I've never actually played them. But if you do, let me know. But would those games still have been really good on any other console? Would they have been good on the PS3? Would they have been good on the 360? Now, is it obviously, everyone knows the, the reason the Wii is sold so well is because they aimed it at the family market, and that's probably why it did sell so well. Now, with the Wii U coming out and not being as successful as the Wii and them using the same kind of gimmick idea of having something there that would sell it, which was obviously the control pad, uh, being that kind of touch screen and all that kind of stuff as well, which I think is, is pretty nice, it's pretty cool to kind of see that and where they're going for it, but it just has not sold anywhere near as what they thought it would. So now, do the Wii, now do, sorry, do Nintendo need to now go back and then and go back to the roots and go back to a console they, which they know sold so well? Now, the Super Nintendo was, was I would probably say, one of their best consoles they've ever done. And, um, a lot of people who are obviously into retro games will know that as well. Even things like the GameCube. The GameCube was a really good console. It just unfortunately, it just didn't sell well. They need to go back to games like this and consoles like this that will, that will hopefully sell them. I would love to see another SNES. Um, obviously, it doesn't have to be anything gimmicky. I just want Nintendo to make a console that is a console and have no gimmicks to it. Um, just make a console that has a controller and that's it. It seems to be a console that plays games and um, that is up to date and has a controller. One you don't have to tilt on the side, one you don't have to point at the screen. Uh, and for me, the SNES would be the good choice for it. Go back to uh, a console like that, which was just used for playing games uh, and nothing else. I would love to see it again. I would love to see uh, Nintendo kind of do that kind of thing, but I just don't think they will. I think that's the way they think that they're going to sell is by gimmicks. But... And whatever not happen, uh, I just want Nintendo to bring something else out, which is re- going to be really well. Obviously, things like the 3DS is, is selling really well. Um, but obviously, that is, uh, I think that's obviously down to a lot of the the Nintendo DS and DSi and all that kind of stuff, because it's, it's essentially just the same, but you can turn the 3D on and off. 
uh, for that. So that's all I was going to say. Nintendo, I think, have got the handheld market, and that's what they're good at. They've always had the handheld market and have survived the longest. Regarding, obviously, their home consoles, they just don't last as long as other ones. I think the last good console that uh, took its, uh, its place was probably the N64. That was um, probably the last great console that lasted as long as, as other ones. And that still didn't even last as long, I don't think. But things like the GameCube and the Wii. Um, yeah, the, the, the Wii. How many times are you going to, like, uh, pardon me, going to, to somewhere that, and they just sell Wiis all the time? Uh, I search on Gumtree, for example, for a lot of games uh, to pick up some old and some new stuff. And it's just constantly full of Wiis. Uh, so imagine that you're never going to run out of Wii's. I think you can pick a Wii up now for about £40. So I just showed you where it's come uh, in the last few years. But yeah, so that's the question really. Does Nintendo need to make a SNES too? Um, and I think they do. They need to go back to what they do best and make a console that's just a console and nothing else. It doesn't have to play the BBC I player. It doesn't have to um, have Wii's, uh, Wii Mii's or something like that, what they're called, thing. Is it Mii's. Uh, it doesn't have to anything like that. Just space has to build up a game, uh, a console that will play games and it will connect online and you can play with your friends. A simple online system that will allow you to play with your friends and uh, connect online and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I just definitely think that's what you need to do. Now, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, it's just it's just a short podcast here I wanted to do. I'm going to take a while to edit it and add a few little things in here uh, as well. Um, but that's, um, yeah, that's pretty much me. So the last thing I just want to mention is um, is there anything else you think I can do to improve this podcast? Is there any suggestions you have? Um, or do you have any questions for me? You can ask me anything really. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Um, on, well, not necessarily on anything, but if you have any gaming really questions that you want to ask me, let me know. Uh, or improvements, let me know as well. As I said, for this will first go up on YouTube to get some feedback. And then I will try to get to downloadable and all that kind of stuff. So if you have any comments on YouTube, let me know. Um, but yeah. So that's pretty much it really guys, uh, it's been Stephen here from Game Not Loaded and hopefully uh, I will come back obviously with the second podcast and I hopefully will have some guests but keep an eye out on the Facebook page uh, with all the updates, I'll be putting up there of who's who's coming on the show and all that kind of stuff uh, as well. But yeah, it's me Stephen here from Game Not Loaded, I hope you've enjoyed this and look forward to, to seeing you soon.